right now I am outside the city of Carentan in Normandy and in the Battle of Normandy this was a, a very important location uh, that basically served as a link up between the American forces that were coming in from Utah and Omaha Beach and U.S. forces had moved through the 101st Airborne and had, had pushed the 6th Fallschirmjäger out of the city of Carentan and obviously the Germans didn't like that and wanted to take it back. So, so there was a counterattack that occurred here that is depicted in the series Band of Brothers. Easy Company was part of the fight that took place in an area very close to here called Bloody Gulch. moved a little bit away from Bloody Gulch and the spot where I'm at right now I wanted to come to to explain something that in the series Band of Brothers might have left a little bit of a misconception. In, in the series you, you watch it and there's this scene where F Company looks like they are retreating and Easy Company kind of comes in and saves the day. Uh, the, the truth of the matter was a little bit more complicated. Alright, now you're going to have to work with me a little bit on this one because we're in some brush. But if I move up here and throw myself into these briars, well, right ahead along this hedgerow is where F Company would have advanced. So back in this direction is where E Company was. Uh, F Company was on their left flank. Now, F Company had advanced out ahead of E Company to this point. And right around here in this spot, well, the, the Germans were coming around this corner in some self-propelled guns. Uh, one of them turned and started making their way down this hedgerow. Uh, Bob Nudy uh, hit it uh, with a bazooka and knocked it out. Uh, the other self propelled gun goes off in this direction and uh, it also got hit around the corner and and really what happens is F Company is engaged in some pretty fierce action up here and they are taking the brunt of the attack and and if you look I mean we're kind of in some low ground here so you you can't see very far at all so F Company is is really taking the the brunt of this attack and are really kind of out of ammunition. So at the point in the show, it looks like F Company is just retreating back in this direction in complete disarray. Really, they're falling back because they've ran out of ammo. All right, now we're gonna go back to uh, the area of the Easy Company Bloody Gulch. I've moved back over into the area of Bloody Gulch and this uh, bike path looking thing that I'm on right now was where a rail line ran through in 1944 and as we talked about you know F Company is is falling back and this was going to serve as one of the axes of advance for the German counterattack uh, on the city of Carenton. So right here along this former rail line is where the German counterattack is going to occur. There was a column of German Stugs that were coming in this direction. And right here in this spot, well, there were a couple of easy company guys who were out in a forward position. Uh, Earl McClung was one of them, uh, Smokey Gordon, and a few others. Well, when they start hearing the clatter of the Stugs coming in their direction, well, they're kind of like the early warning system, and they end up falling back. And about the time that the German Stugs hit this area right here, uh, well, things started to get 
rather ugly uh, for them. Uh, there was uh, a few that, that made it past and uh, got knocked out. So like Moose Heiger, uh mortar is falling on them here. They're also taking fire from the left, fire from the right. Uh, but, but right here is where the uh, fire from the 101st Airborne would have fallen on these, uh, these German Stugs that were attacking. And uh, it wasn't just Easy Company that was here. There were also some dog company guys right out there in that house. Since we're in this area, I wanted to also point out this farmhouse over here. If, if uh, you read my book, Fierce Valor, you might remember the part where Ronald Spears and his men were during the Battle of Carentan, and he talked about a small farmhouse. And if you didn't read my book, you should get it and read this account. This account is amazing because Ronald Spears wrote it himself a few years after the war when he was at the infantry school and uh, it, was, it was a report he made on small unit tactics and he uh, wrote about the Battle of Carentan and what happened at this very farm. So since we were in this area, I thought I would point that out and uh, get the book Fierce Valor. All right, I've moved over now back to the Easy Company area of Bloody Gulch. And uh, things are a little bit different now than they were in 1944. So uh, when, when you come to Bloody Gulch, the, the real Bloody Gulch, there's another place that's not Bloody Gulch that on Google Maps says it is. But anyway, when you come to the real Bloody Gulch, uh, you have to use your imagination a little bit. So the direction that we are looking at right now, right through here, is pretty much going to be the left flank of Easy Company on the day that the Battle of Bloody Gulch takes place. Now again, in the show, it's depicted that they see F Company you know, falling back in complete disarray. Uh, really from here, they would not have been able to have even seen F Company, but F Company is going to be coming back right over that, uh, that ridge line. And then, if we move right over here, this, this is the part where we have to start using our imagination a little bit. Because the Bloody Gulch battlefield is now this industrial parking lot. So if you look right out here, just on the other side of that car, that's uh, roundabout where Dick Winters would have been. Uh, so you would have had first, second, and third platoons in a line right through here. Uh, back there at that supermarket is where Moose Heidegger, uh, or Heidegger would have had his mortars. And the German attack is gonna be coming from this direction right here. Uh, so there's a couple of German Stugs that come across and fire. And this is pretty interesting here. This is Colonel Sink's headquarters and you can still see the battle damage in the side of this wall from where the Germans uh, were firing in this direction and uh, hit this command post. Yeah, pretty cool to, to be here and see the battleground, even though it has been subjected to some urban sprawl. All right, we've got uh, one more thing that we've brought along today that we want to show that is connected to a guy whose life was forever changed at this battle. I'm standing at Bloody Gulch, and I wanted to bring out a very significant artifact today from the collections at the Gettysburg Museum of History and that is the Purple Heart of DeWitt Lowry. DeWitt Lowry was in Easy Company 506 Parachute Infantry Regiment 101st Airborne and he was severely wounded during the Battle of Carentan somewhere near this area. He was hit in the head by German shrapnel 
And that injury was so severe that it took him out of the war. And it was also so severe that his recovery took almost two years. They had to drill holes in his skull to relieve the pressure because his brain swelled. Dewitt Lowry carried the wounds of war for the rest of his life because he suffered from epilepsy after this severe wound. And uh, this is the first time I brought this out and I just thought it would be a fitting tribute to him to bring his Purple Heart that he received for his wounds at the Battle of Carantan near the spot where he was actually wounded.